bottom of the exhale. And see if this can sort of gently wash you into being here. You can cleanse the mind from whatever you were doing before class so that you're more and more present right here. And you can bring in the simple sound of the ujjayi breath so that you have a sense. You're going to sort of captivate or um, lull your mind into really being in the present. On days when it's easier for you to arrive and to kind of come right into your integration, that might be a sign that you've had good sleep, good nutrition, enough support, enough regular practice, some time in nature, all the ingredients that help you to be the more resourced and resilient version of yourself. On days when it's harder to come into your sense of focus or integration, it might be a hint about some areas in your self-care or your daily life that are a little bit off. Or something has been activated for you and is asking for your attention, like a healing kind of attention. So wherever you find yourself in that spectrum, like very present or very distracted, please lift your hands now to your heart. May our practice protect us from the mental mayhem. May our practice help us to protect our sangha, our community, so that we can continue to feel safe and connected here. And may our practice also protect the, the tradition of yoga. May we not feel like we have to distort it or make it up as we go along, sort of improve on thousands of years of wisdom. And may our practice help us to be good stewards of the earth. May this practice also be nourishing. May it be strong when necessary. May we remember that which is tejas, that which is luminous and overcome that which pulls us down, that which is tamas. May we not succumb to impatience or intolerance. May there be peace. And let's begin. Om Sana Vavatu Sana Bunakto Savidyang Karavavai Tejas vinavadi tamastu Ma vidveshavahi Om sahana vavatu Sahana bunakto Savidyang Karavavai Tejas Vinavari Tamastu Mavideshavahi 
Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Upunakto Savidyang Haravavai Tejasvina Vahi Tamastu Ma Vibeshavahi Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyon Namaha Hari You may bow your head to your heart and release your hands out over your knees. And as you're sitting upright, try to sense the center of the pelvic floor, like the center of the perineum as a place of stability around which we're gonna circle the pelvis and the torso. And when you are circling, do your best to keep both hips and legs pretty stable. So you're not like a weeble wobble I mean, you might feel like that, but do your best to circle around the center of the pelvic floor. Go in the other direction, please. Do you have two directions? You chose one and then you reversed it. And we're going to do that again a couple times. Start to bring the ujjayi breath in now so that you're Ujjayi breath, whatever length that is, might represent several circles. Change direction, please. And then try switching your directions for inhale and exhale. And see if you can have maybe the same number of rotations for your inhale and your exhale, mostly a sign that your breath is equal between inhale and exhale. And then bring that slowly around the center. So let's start making the circles smaller and slower. Let the breath the same long inhale, long exhale. And bring it around until you're sitting in the center of the perineum. You're now taking the right hand over the left hand. I'm sorry, left hand over the right, excuse me. It's my right and left. So reach your left hand over your right hand, out over your knee. Make this a firm place to hold, please. And then as you exhale, bring the spine towards cat pose. Inhale up to cow pose. Exhale to cat, press your right knee down so it's kind of stabilizing your right hand, which is stabilizing your left hand. And as you're moving through cat and cow, let the breath be your, your guide, your companion. Notice that this cat cow has a little twist and a little side bend feeling to it. We'll go up one more time to cow pose and down one more time to cat pose. Now facing to the right and keeping your left hip grounded, walk your hands forward out past your right knee. And do your best to walk your left hand particularly forward 
and reach back with your left sitting bone and your left outer hip. Now breathe in and on the next breath that's coming, I'm gonna ask you to raise your chest, your heart and your left arm, reach forward. And then exhale and bow down and place your left hand on the floor as if you were putting the cat's claws in the floor. Inhale, root your left hip, raise your heart, reach your left arm forward. And exhale to bow over your right thigh. And do that one more time, inhale, root down into your left hip as you reach with your left arm. And then exhale, return to center. So one of the things that I spoke about this week is that as a member of the human tribe, we have a polyvagal system and one of our reflexes is called the reach reflex. We reach for care, we reach for help, we reach for connection. So that reach reflex is instinctive to us. Please switch your ankles and then take your left hand over your left knee, right hand over the left hand. And press your left knee down so it's gonna, gonna give you a firm place for your hands to be stable. And then exhale, come into your cat pose spine. Inhale, cow pose spine. Exhale, cat pose, spine reach back with your right kidney and down with your right hip and sitting bone. Inhale, raise up through your heart. Exhale, curl down. Inhale, rise up, opening. And exhale, a couple of times more. So you may be feeling like there's places that you didn't know were tight because we added this little twist and this side bend. You may be having a discovery. Let's go up one more time with the inhale. And down one more time with the exhale, press your left knee out and down. And then please walk yourself out over your left thigh. Reach especially with your right fingertips and press your right hip back and down towards the floor. Notice how you're breathing and staying connected to the ground beneath you, particularly at your right outer hip right outer thigh. And then when you inhale next, raise your chest and your heart and your right arm. And then exhale to bow over your right leg, release the weight of your head, left leg, excuse me. Inhale, raise up. Reaching. Exhale, curl down. This is more like refuge. We also have a need for refuge. Inhale to reach once more. Exhale to bow once more. And then inhale, rise up to your seat. And see if you can sense your connection at your seat, at the ground, any bit more. and your connection to the present moment and to your Sangha, can you sense that any bit more? Okay, please come to your hands and knees in table pose. And as you come to table pose, 
Put your knees hip distance apart based on your hip sockets here. And then the hands shoulder width apart with the index fingers. Let's do them parallel to each other and the other fingers spread out from there. Let's make this a, a genuine table pose. And then imagine that your belly button is gonna draw a circle on the floor beneath you. And then as you draw this circle on the floor, let's think of it more like, I think I might've said this yesterday or maybe it was Friday, I can't remember, that you're making like a spiral. So the circle is actually getting bigger. And when you come around to certain parts of the circle, you're gonna notice that one paw, as if you had four paws, one paw is bearing more weight than another. Start to improvise on what you would feel would be the natural movement between cat and cow with this spiral. What does your body feel would be the intuitive way to move through And I will ask you to change directions on the spiral and we'll do it a few times. And you can have both the largest part of your spiral and you could have like the smallest circle as well. And maybe you could move it like you're actually a labyrinth more than a spiral. So you change directions in kind of an improvisational way here. So there's no real getting it wrong. You also can't get it right. Let's start making the circle a little smaller and a little slower. Start really taking notice when there's weight in one hand or one knee one of your paws. And how does that weight transfer to the other paw? When your circle becomes smallest, smallest and smaller yet again, then come to stillness. Please curl your toes under and press up into downward dog pose. And in your downward facing dog pose, let's become very still since we just had a couple of moving practices. Let your body become very still here. There's gonna be an aliveness inside, a continual sense of the movement of the breath, for example, and the prana. But let's do what we can to make the muscles and bones relatively stable and also for your mind. Now please inhale, raise high up on your toes and stretch your feet. Exhale, reach way down through your heels, stretch your calves. Inhale, high up on the toes, press into the mount of the toes, stretch your arches. Exhale, root your heels back, lengthen your calves. And inhale, raise up again, high on your toes. And once more, exhale your heels back down towards the floor. And using two straight elbows, walk in tiny steps backwards. Using now what's called the push reflex, walk your hands backwards towards Uttanasana. And then please shift your hands to your hips and rise up to standing. You're at the back of your mat right now, conceivably. Relax both arms and drop your attention down into your footprints. So the, the root chakra, Muladhara, means our connection to the root and also to the earth. The element is earth. 
try to sense that now through your feet. And some of our duties at the root chakra include things like protecting our practice. So keeping it on your schedule <laughs> and keeping your mind here in your practice when you're having your practice. Also protecting our sangha, our community, our relationships, not protecting them by being inauthentic, but protecting by really caring and therefore bringing forth authenticity. And also protecting the tradition of yoga so it doesn't have to be co-opted. It has already been, but you don't have to participate in that. And then protecting all the resources that every one of us is dependent upon. So now we're going to do some Kriya. Kriya is a word for cleansing in this case. Kriya also means other things in yoga, but I'm using it in the sense of a cleansing practice. So come down to the jazz dance warm up pose, please. It's my hope that just like with the 7 a.m. classes, I'm, I'm actually hoping that you're coming without having just eaten pancakes, <laughs> that you're coming with a relatively empty stomach. Um, so may that be so. And if it's not, then you, this might be contraindicated. If you just had banana chocolate chip muffins before you came to class, this is contraindicated. So we're gonna do Bastrika in this position. It's a strong exhale to sort of charge up the hara and to expel the residue of unfinished exhales. And then we'll have an inhale. We'll be going up for the inhale and then we'll go down for the exhale to prasarata. Like that. So jazz dance pose, please. And let's begin. Long exhale, and then inhale, push down, rise up. Make the feet parallel, and exhale, come down. Energize your legs, but deeply relax the inner belly. Try to sense how the next inhale comes to meet you. And keeping your legs strong, raise your hands to your hips and rise back up to standing. Mm -hmm. Jazz dance warm up pose. Round number two, a little bit faster this time. You wanna try it out? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's begin. into your feet. Inhale, rise up. Make the feet parallel and exhale to come down. Keep the legs toned and energized, but deeply relax the inner pelvis, your inner belly, and your mind.
And again, raise your hands up to your hips, rise up to standing. So I was having a little laugh because she sat last time right where I would be blowing on her face again and again, and she wouldn't know what that is. So I was trying to angle my head not to blow directly on her face. Now, come back down one more time. This time we're gonna use Kapalabhati, so it's through the nose. It'll be a little bit faster. So set your foundation. It should feel to you like the pelvic floor is consistent and toned during the activity and that the, the expulsion of the exhale is not making the pelvic floor blink on and off. Let's begin. Exhale completely and inhale, rise up. Make the feet parallel, please. And exhale, come forward and down. Now from the intimacy of your footprints, which are not very large considering the scale of the planet, but from where your footprints are, can you sense the inhale to take you out and kind of encompass as if you're embracing the whole world? And on the exhale, return to your footprints. And do that just a couple times to feel there is an instinct in us to want to care for the whole tribe. Of course, the planet is overcrowded, so what was instinctive for small tribes and small villages can seem incomprehensible. Let's see if you can explore it. And please raise your hands up to your hips and we'll go heel toe, heel toe into center. Please reach for a blanket. You're going to unfold the blanket from the fold that it might have been, and let's take it like this. We're going to roll it up. When you roll it, roll it snugly. Reach for your blocks so that you'll have them for support. Hi. We're gonna step up onto the blanket with the arches. So that is how you're gonna be doing your Uttanasana. Um, but first we're gonna stand on the blanket roll in mountain pose. Which means you're really gonna to have to sense your feet. So neither the heels nor the toes are touching the floor. Please don't hyperextend your knees. Okay, there you are. Yeah, see if you can find a place where there's a quality of steadiness in spite of these little bitty fluctuations that have to happen. You might also be able to notice, so please don't hold your breath. You might start noticing that your feet and your pelvic floor are communicating and they also communicate with the transverse abdominis. So this bit of a massage on the feet now, if you've, if you've caught into some place of stability, now give yourself the challenge of coming down to Uttanasana. And for those for whom your hamstrings need you to, of course, you're going to place blocks for your hands to reach the floor and others will hold, the fingertips will come down to the floor. And try leveling your feet. So you have a sense, like if you were standing on a balance board, you wouldn't have the back of the balance board nor the front tipped, but level, in spite of the fact that neither your heels nor your toes are on the floor. Yeah. 
And now begin to bring your toes down to the floor on the front side of your blanket. Bend your knees, reach your arms forward and come down to Malasana, also called squatting. Oh, I have a passenger in my squat. Hi, Nandita. Okay, so when you reach the arms forward, it's a little bit like a, a cat pose spine. It's more of a rounded spine. And then roll yourself onto your toes and come to the toe balance pose. Inhale, reach up, more like a cow pose spine. And then exhale, roll your heels back to the blanket roll. Come into your squat, Malasana. Bring your fingertips down to the floor and raise up to Uttanasana. Nandita had unfortunate timing. <laughs> Roll your heels down towards the floor, raise your toes up. So you might be feeling your calf muscles stretching. You may bow towards the legs if your calves and the, the nerves that run up and down the back of your legs will let you bow towards the legs. Okay, let's inhale, bring the heart forward, please. Go ahead and use your blocks as needed underneath your hands. And then exhale, toes down to the floor, hips down, malasana. Inhale, toe balance pose. Raise your heels off of the blanket. Exhale, malasana. And inhale, uttanasana, heels to the floor behind you. One more time, exhale, toes down, hips down, malasana. Inhale, toe balance pose. Exhale, malasana. And inhale, uttanasana, drop your heels down behind you. Now see if you can level your feet on the blankets once more and without hyperextending your knees as, a, as your primary strategy, not even as your secondary strategy, can you rise up to standing into mountain pose and find your place. And then step backwards and notice your feet and the rest of you too, but notice your feet at the moment. Sana Bhavatu Sana Punakta Saviryang Karava Vahai Tejasvina Vahai Tamastu Okay, warriors, <laughs> you are getting to see the wilderness here. This is, <laughs> she loves to burrow under the mats, the blankets, the bedspread, the, the couch cover. She loves to burrow under. So you're going to get to see a little bit of wilderness here. Okay, let's bring our blocks up for Surya Namaskar, please. Place yourself at the front of your yoga mat. Join your hands at your heart. So the root, the element is earth. The duty is this kind of full spectrum caring, which includes caring for yourself so that you can be here to care. Saha Deva is the warrior's name. Saha, Saha Navavatu, Saha Nyabunaktu, Saha Vidyankarava Vahai. Okay, let's tone the legs, please. And as you next inhale, Ujjayi, sweep the hands down, wide and up. And exhale, chair pose. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana, press into your heels and your toes, raise up with your heart. Exhale, a big embrace for the world around you as you come down to Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward. 
Exhale, take the left toes straight back and please touch your left knee down. Anjane Asana is the base. Okay, inhale, rise up. And then exhale, stay in Anjane Asana, but open the arms wide. So you're also welcoming the embrace of the world. Inhale, raise up. Exhale, opening. Once more, inhale, rise up. And exhale, come down to touch the two blocks. Make your hands firm. Inhale, step to plank pose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> exhale to seal pose. Step over your feet so your toes are pointed. Inhale, light up your seal pose. Exhale, come slowly down to low cobra. Shoulders back behind the collarbones. And inhale up to high cobra. Great, exhale, push down to seal pose with the upward movement of the chest and heart. Inhale, light it up. Exhale, plank. Use your push reflex in plank pose. Inhale, raise high, downward facing dog pose. And exhale, left foot forward and right knee down. Inhale, rise. A wide embrace for the world. Exhale, open so you're receiving life. Inhale, rise up. A wide embrace of the world. And exhale, you might say opening to the divine or to spirit or to the sky, whatever you'd like to call that. One more time, please go up. And exhale, place both hands on the blocks lightly. Use your fingertips. Inhale, step forward, heart forward. And exhale, bow over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to the heart, Anjali Mantra. Like I said, you get to witness <laughs> wildlife. <laughs> okay, round number two. Inhale, <laughs> upward hands pose. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, rise up, upward hands pose. And exhale, Uttanasana. Hi, you having a hard time? <laughs> Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, take your left toes back and the left knee down, but not on the cat's tail. Inhale, rise, Anjane Asana. Exhale, open. Inhale, rise up, Anjane Asana. And exhale, come forward. Place your hands firmly on the two blocks and inhale to plank pose. Exhale, seal pose, raise your chest and heart up, point your toes behind you and then inhale to, to make it more radiant, to light it up. Exhale, low cobra. Inhale, high cobra. <laughs> Exhale, press down with your arms, go up with your chest. Inhale, light up the pose from the inside. Exhale, plank. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale, Anjane Asana. Exhale, open. Please don't sink into your left hip, but inhale, rise up. And exhale, coming down, place your fingertips lightly on the two blocks and inhale, step forward, heart forward. 
and exhale to bow over your legs. Ujjayi breath, inhale, rise up. And exhale to the heart. Invite yourself to stand really still. If you could imagine that all of the villagers, all of the creatures, all of the elements, that all of creation is really your very self. And that you are also that for others. So the sense of separateness dissolves. And as we were born, we didn't have any sense of the differentiation. We could sense ourselves to be a part of all that was. So just now, can you sense yourself to be a part of all that is? I'm going to ask you to use your two blocks and take the wide stance on your mat, the wide side. So I'm going to scoot myself back. You will need space about the distance of your side angle pose, which is a pose we were focusing on either yesterday or the day prior. I don't remember. I recall that it happened, but I don't have the date and time. So we're gonna place the two blocks over here to the side. Let's put one on the flat and one on the medium. Now I have a, com a sense of confidence in your agility with your yoga, including agility with your blocks. Okay, so please turn your right foot directly to the right. Step the left heel slightly back. Place your hands on your hips here. Okay, bend your right knee so it's gonna come over so your shin will be vertical. And then let's tip the pelvis to come down so that your right fingertips have a place to land. And I'm gonna actually recommend that you do use your fingertips for right now because of, I know where we're going. So if you press into your fingertips firmly, that's your push reflex. And as you do that, lengthen out through your right inner thigh. You might feel yesterday's practice there. Press into your right footprint. So making the right foot and the right fingertips potent, strong, now reach from your left inner belly back to your left heel and raise your left arm past your ear. So the left arm is gonna be the reach reflex. Your right arm is the push reflex. Let's breathe in to reach. And breathe out to push. Press down through the strength of your right arm. And breathe in and feel the reach reflex. Breathe out, notice your push reflex. Now, both of these reflexes are gonna make more sense to you if your feet are still grounded. If you have a stable place from which to practice reaching and pressing. And please bring your gaze down to look down towards your right foot. Place your left hand on your left hip. Now pick up the block that's there for your right hand, make it tall and place it just beyond your foot. And then take a baby step in with your left foot. Press into your right leg. So that's your push reflex with your right leg. Raise yourself up to Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon pose. You may keep gazing down for any reason. Could be you have a brain injury, you have a hip replacement. 
Could be your mind is scattered and gazing down helps to feel more grounded. You may raise your left arm, so Ardha Chandrasana. Notice how you maintain your focus and also your breath. Reach through your left heel and reach your left arm past your left ear. So make the reaching reflex on the left side of your torso as strong. You know that it's dependent upon the stability of your right leg and your right arm. And then as you exhale, start bending your right knee. Keep your gaze steady and reach the toes of your left foot all the way back to side angle. Place your block where it began and look up. And then exhale, root down to rise up. Let's make the feet parallel. And after an adventure, we're gonna to come to refuge. So come down. And notice your body when you come down and forward, what happens with the tone of the legs, the experience of the breath, and also the quality of your mind. And then please shift your hands up to your hips, rise up to standing. Let's do the other side of the sequence. And so for some of you, because of where you're practicing, it's gonna make sense to scoot yourself like a typewriter bar. Move, move yourself on your mat. Check that you're not gonna hit your head on the wall where you're going. You're not gonna knock something over in that direction either. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's place the left foot pointing to the left and the right foot. Just bring the, the heel slightly out and the toes slightly in. Bend your left knee. Rotate the pelvis. Good, place your left fingertips. And so check in with your legs. To find that sense of ground, you press into the left toes, left heel, but also your right toes and your right heel. Make the left arm strong all the way into the fingerprints and your thumb, and then reach with your right arm. So the reaching reflex is expressed from a place of stability we're able to reach. Pressing reflex, press down with your left arm, also called the push reflex. That push is really important, but so is the reach. Each one is better able to express itself when there's a place of stability. Let's take the block with your left hand, tip it to the tall. You may choose to take a big step forward or put your right hand on your right hip and then take the other steps gradually forward. Straighten your left leg. You can keep gazing down if you like and raise your right arm up towards the ceiling. Look for a stable mind. And as you reach your right arm past your right ear, considering the space that you're in. Reach as you're able to. And sense that the reaching reflex from your back leg to your heel, from your top arm to your hand, is all balanced on the strength of your left leg. And then as you exhale, begin to bend your left knee. You're gonna take one big step way back Walk the left block back to where it began. Come to Parjvakanasana. And then exhale, root down to rise up. 
make the feet parallel. So we go from adventure into refuge. Come on down. Taking refuge in your practice, taking refuge in the Sangha, taking refuge in the present moment. And this time we're gonna walk the hands just a little bit forward. Pick up the heels, go heel, toe, heel, toe until you can come down. Come over to your knees, reach for a block. You can take the bench setting or the flat setting, whatever you prefer. And please take a seat in Vajrasana. Depending on how you place the block, you would call your pose Virasana. So Vajrasana means thunderbolt, thunderbolt pose, and Virasana means hero's pose. They're both poses of strength. And you hear, Saviryam. That word virya is in the line right there. So Virasana or Vajrasana. Rest your hands in your lap, please. Now, earlier in class, we took our minds out to encompass the planet. I'm going to ask you now to take your mind in and in and in like Star Trek, but on the internal frontiers. So you can notice the outer structure of your body. the muscles and the bones. And going inside, even muscles and bones have space in them. And trillions and trillions of tiny, tiny structures that support you. And deeper than muscles and bones, the nerve pathways. The circulatory pathways. The respiratory pathways. Deeper than those, we have the subtle body of the senses. The subtle experience of thoughts and the mind. And deeper yet than that, an inner sense of wisdom, a palpable kind of quiet intelligence, a life intelligence, not a, a book smart intelligence. And innermost this felt sense of love and belonging. It is both innermost and not contained by your body. This Ananda, Ananda Mayakosha. You are resting in it, it is holding you.
with your palms resting in your lap, please join me in the practice of LAM. This is the sound of the first chakra. We chant it five times with a long M at the last of the five, and we'll do this five times. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum, 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 lum. Lum. Please come to lying on your back with your four blocks within reach. At first, I'm going to ask you just to lie down. Extend the legs out. Notice after kneeling, when you lie down, there is this flushing response where the circulation is going back down the legs. And then we're going to take one block for each foot. So you can place the blocks under your feet on the medium setting like this. Now you have two other blocks. And if you'll watch here for a moment, you're going to put one block flat, could be like this. And some of you will put the second block medium, so it'll look like this. But some people will take the second block on the tall setting, and that will look like this. Sometimes people do put two blocks on the medium setting. It can be a little bit unstable. So I do want you to be thoughtful if you're going to choose this, that it's a, a bit tippy. And so if you wanted to do two blocks on the medium setting, this is actually more stable. I feel like I'm on a cooking show. <laughs> it's like you can chop your broccoli this way or you can chop it that way. Okay, so let's take a lift of the hips. Don't turn your head sideways at this point. Oops, and there's a cat under there. <laughs> so you can start with one block flat and then you've got your hips elevated so you could put the second block in place and check that you have good block construction. So this is an elevated form of the bridge pose. 
Please tuck the shoulders under the heart. And don't be ambitious when you can be wise. So in this supported bridge pose with your feet up on the two blocks, my hope is that you don't have any sense of stress across the hip flexors and that you can have a gentle sense of a pelvic tilt that brings your pelvis to neutral. Roll your shoulders firmly down towards the floor. And as you gaze into your heart, you can decide if you'd like to take one leg up to Ekapada, Satyabandhasana. You also could take both legs up and it becomes a supported candlestick pose or like supported um, shoulder stand pose. As you gaze inward towards your heart, let the mind be calm. If your hamstrings are distressing for you, bend your knees and take the knees slightly out. So your hip flexors are not being uh, coerced by your hamstrings to work extra hard. This is called the candlestick pose. Sometimes it's called supported shoulder stand. You may sense that your face is getting warmer, that the blood supply is moving towards your head. Bend one knee, take that foot back down to its block. Bend the other knee, place that foot back down on its block. Lift your hips to take the first block out. Leave the, I mean the top block out. Leave the other one there, please. Directly under your sacrum. Lower your hips down. Allow the pelvis to tip so that there's a sense that you're the energy is flowing from the pubic bone towards the belly button, towards your heart. And then pick up your hips from that block. Lower the pelvis down and please come to Baddha Konasana. Place the soles of the feet together and use the blocks for your knees. I have to change my position, so I, I respect where Nakula must have an idea. He needs to be right there. So come down to Bharatanasana with the knees supported. You can take the arms out to the side, palms face up, or you could place your palms on the lower belly if that's nourishing for you to do. Just a little warning that sometimes 
Nakula purrs or snores during Shavasana. Right now he's quiet. So come to rest and let the medicine of the whole practice remind you of this essence, the Ananda, which is paradoxically the most indwelling and also not contained, it's not in you, you are in it. It is not within you, you are resting within it. You're not divisible from it. So at the root chakra in our infancy, we are born with a sense that we are undivided. We are not separate from. Everything is us and we are everything. Now you are adults practicing. We're not going back to infancy. We could sense that quality of being immersed with intimate, with all that is, that everything and everyone is also our own to care for. Allow yourself to deeply rest. The art of resting is something we need to bring back for society to help to heal the earth. And let yourself deeply rest right now.
Allow your mind to rest, the inner stability of that which is holding you. Continue to deeply rest. If your mind wanders, if it daydreams, come back to something tangible in the present. The feeling of your body making an impression on the ground, for example. Allow the deeply resting to continue. Don't intrude on yourself right now. Don't lure yourself away.
Now allowing that heaviness to be the quality of stability and the ability to remember. I'd like you to slowly fold your knees up. Place your feet flat on the floor. When you are ready to, please roll to one side. Return to your seat. Placing your seat as close to the ground as you can, be respectful of your body's needs. Place your seat so that you might have almost direct contact with the sitting bones to the floor. Maybe the tailbone is lightly touching also. Rest one hand in the palm of the other. You can shape them like a tiny bowl, like you have a little offering in there. Rest in the center where there's the absence of intrusive thoughts. You may try to sing this with me. We're singing at the root. It's one note and then one special note. And the last two lines are one special note. You go like this. Oh. 
deepest intention towards your heart. Place it in your heart. Keep it in your heart, but also place it in the centers of your palms. May this intention come forward as an offering from your heart. And bow your head, placing this intention near the sixth chakra. May our vision be clear. Bring it back down to the heart. And then we make it as an offering to each other, to everyone and everything. We are also receiving each other's offerings. And then bring that back to Anjali Mudra, back into your heart, and back down to the seat of your intention. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. So a quick reminder that we do have a climate awareness group this afternoon at 4.30. The link for that is also on the Daya Foundation website. And this afternoon, I'm gonna show a very short video about water on behalf of the climate and also our journey through the chakras. So today was the earth element. <laughs> oh, the armpits. <laughs> I know this carpet is white and he is white, so it's hard for you to see. Maybe it's a little bit blended. So that's 4.30 to 6 this afternoon, and it's a time to come together, really to bring awareness and our ability to have a conversation, to feel our vulnerability, to spark some courage or camaraderie. So that's this afternoon at 4.30. It's also just a donation offering. Oh, one sleepy kitty here. I'm gonna come up to say hi to you guys closer. I'll need these. <laughs> Ready? I'm not gonna drop you. Watch out for the cord. Yeah, look at all those people. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take my seat and see if they'll stay with me. Hi, honey. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, you were having such a sweet dream. Some kind of you were not snoring, which is kind of amazing these days. Hi, everyone. You're a very limp little kitty. 
Oh, still asleep. Yeah. How's everyone feeling? I know you'd rather see him than me, so 